into the presence of the king. You just love on him. That's it. Love on him. Come on. It's not about us entertaining you. We're all participating. Come on. Come on, Abba. Come on, just say that, Abba. I belong to you. Come on. Now I want you to sing it from your heart. Come on. Come on. Come on, help us out, cow. Just sing Abba. That's all I want you to sing. That's all I want you to sing in the atmosphere. Come on. Come on, lift that up. I belong to you. How many belong to him on this morning? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Abba. Worship him. The things that are going on in your life, hallelujah. He straightened it out. Come on. As the disciple did ministry with him, he had a problem at his house. And because he served God, God went back to his house and healed his mother in law. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. you 
I will dance in your presence until you come again. Yes. Can you help me say I will dance? I will dance in your presence until you come again. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. How many mean that? I will dance in your presence yes. until you come again. just want to be with you. Can you sing with me this morning? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you because there's nobody like you. just want to be with you. Let me hear the voices. No music, let's sing. King of glory, yeah. like your presence God I need more of you King of glory on this weekend I told him I said I want he asked me what did I want and he began to place the order for me and oh I caught that in the spirit hey, amen hallelujah glory to God that order is being placed for you right now hallelujah 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 and they are safe hallelujah and they are safe and he asked me 
He said, I began to give him my order, and I told him I never finished my drink. I never finished the whole drink. Amen. So I said, give me a small Diet Coke. Give me a small Diet Coke. And when we, we drove around, I thought I heard him ask for a small Diet Coke. When we got to the window, he began to get the food and we began to get the drinks and everything. And I looked down at the drink and I said, this is bigger than what I ordered. I didn't want this. I said, why did you order me this big drink? You know, I'm not going to finish it. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, you're going to ask for something else, but you're going to receive something bigger. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're going to put an order in for something that you're looking for, but God is going to give you more than what you asked for. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Super size. Super size. Yes, super size. Come on. Find another neighbor and say, Super size. No, I need some people with faith in this room. I ordered one thing and got another. I believe that there is divine intervention on the way. Hallelujah. And that thing that you've been praying for, hallelujah, is going to be bigger than what you expected. Hallelujah. You're not going to have room to receive it. Hallelujah. Because super size is all over you. Come on, put your hand on your head. Say super size. Woo! Super size. My money. Super size. My territory. Super size. My ideas. I want you to follow these instructions. Come on, I need some people that really want their faith to be lifted. Hallelujah. I want you to get out your seat, and I want you to find seven people. The number seven represents completion. I want you to touch them, and I want you to say, super size be upon you. Come on, do it right now. Do it right now. Super size in your money. Super size in your relationships. Hallelujah. Super size in your business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 woo, yes, yeah, yeah, come on, that's it, that's it, abundance, overflow, more than enough, hallelujah, bread to spare, super size, woo, abundantly, Above on you, you could act the thing. Yeah. Above the thing. That's it, that's it, that's it. Above on you, you could act the thing. Exceedingly. Above on you, you could act the thing. Super Sabi. Super Sabi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Sabi. Yeah. Super size, super size, super size, super size, super size. Super size. That means that whatever it is that you're super going through size. is minimal compared about compared to what God is getting ready to do for you. That simply means that what you're going through is minimal compared to what God is getting ready to do for you. That means that what you're going through is minimal compared to what God is getting ready to do for you. Super size. Super size. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Super size. 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 Go ahead and get that word in your spirit. Super size. Super size. Super size. Super size. Super Hallelujah. Super Hallelujah. Super Hallelujah. 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 I believe that if you big and bad enough to ask God for it, God is big and bad enough to give it to you. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth. You have not because you ask not. What is it that you need from him? Hallelujah. Lord, supersize me. Glory be to God. Supersize me. Call it in. Your order is on the way. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you believe that, 
Give the Lord a wave offering if you believe that. I said give him a wave offering. Come by here, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Bless my house, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless this ministry, Lord. Here I am. Hallelujah. I'm like the man that was crazy enough to get up in that tree. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, here am I. Hallelujah. Here am I. Glory be to God. Super side. Super side. Super side. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. More Woo. than enough. Glory be to God. I know we're supposed to do announcements right about now, but I don't want this wave to pass by. It's see so in time. You can't allow the word super size to come out of your mouth and you don't give God a seed. Hallelujah. I don't care where you are. Don't stop the vein. Hallelujah. You ain't got to stop doing what you're doing. I want you to grab your wallet. I want you to grab your purse, and I want you to put your faith where your mouth is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, glory be to God. I want you to put your faith where your mouth is. You can't decree that God's going to supersize you and not give him something to work with. This is an atmosphere of faith. This is an atmosphere of multiplication. If you had caught it already, whatever it is that you believe in God for, God is getting ready to supersize you, but you got to give him something to work with. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord declares in Deuteronomy 8.18, Behold, I've given you the power to get wealth so that my covenant may be established upon the earth. I know prophet has told you to touch about seven people. Hallelujah. And tell them that God is getting ready to supersize you. If you don't have seed in your hand, I know somebody right next to you got some seed in your hand. Glory be to God. And hallelujah. If that's you, I don't care who you are, every person person under the sound of my voice need to get something in this atmosphere because God is getting ready to supersize you. God is getting ready to do it in real time. I don't know if, oh my God, oh my God, God is getting ready to do it for you in real time. If that's you, glory be to God. If you're given electronically, we invite you to text the number 601-202- 4365, you can type the words, I tithe, or you can type the words, I give. For our online audience, we want to welcome you to this Sunday morning inspirational service, opportunity to prosper time here at the epicenter of the church. Amen. Glory be to God. Because anytime you invest into the kingdom and building of the kingdom of God, it's your opportunity to prosper. I know we say it's see so in time, but this is your opportunity opportunity to prosper. Hallelujah. God, the Lord God decreed and declared that, listen, bring ye the tithes into my house. There may, there may be meat in my house and prove me now. Herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven for you, he's opening them up for you, but you got to bring some to him. What do you have in your hand? Glory be to God, 601-202-4365. You can type the words again, I tithe, or you can type the words I give. Hallelujah, supersize me. Supersize me. Matter of fact, if you got an ink pen, which I know it, put supersize on the back of your offering. If you haven't already, then go ahead and write supersize. Glory be to God. Supersize me, Lord. I'm excited about giving because I understand how it works. As a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. Hallelujah. Understand that prosperity is connected to your purpose. And hear me and hear me very carefully. If you don't get some seed in the ground right now, what you're doing, you're setting yourself up for a season of nothing in the future. You got to get some seed in the ground. Because if you don't, you set yourself up for a season of future in the nothing. You got to give God something to work with. The harvest got to come from something. Are y'all ready to give? 
Do I have some chill forgivers in the house on this morning? I'm excited to give because he's given me the power to get wealth. Are you all excited? Give the Lord a shout of praise in this place for what's getting ready to come. Give him a shout of praise in this place for the order that you get ready to place that's attached to your seed. Super size. Super size. Stand with me to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You can come and dance in his presence as you're giving on this morning. Because I believe, I believe with all of my heart that whatever it is that you get ready to do, God is getting ready to do it for you concerning your soul. Let's sow it to the kingdom on this. participating in the ensemble, we ask that you will come forth at this time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Supersize me. Supersize me. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into the good ground of the epicenter. Father, we believe you for a tremendous harvest, not only for our needs, but for the needs of others. Ministering angels, go forth now. Cause a return to come back unto us. We decree it and we declare it right now that increase is coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We decree it right now that you will supersize us according to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout this with me. Income. Increase. Inheritance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Supersize me. Super size, super size, as I told you to our ensemble. How many can agree in this atmosphere that faithful is our God? The first selection that we will be singing this morning says that faithful is our God. And we've decreed in this atmosphere that it is super size. So our next song, it says that we have the victory. So how many can stand this ever and say that my victory will be supersized? So stand on your feet and give a round of applause as the ensembles render these two selections unto you this morning.
the song says the devil thought he had me, but I got away. All because I got the victory.
have the victory, you ought to get up out of your seat right now and act like it. You ought to shout out over the enemy head right now because they just prophesied and proclaimed that you had the victory. How many of us had the victory on this morning? Come on, how many of us had the victory on this morning? You're not dancing like it. Come on, let's shout with the activity of our limbs. Who has the victory? Yes, we have it. We have the victory. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you five seconds to go ahead and shout. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus Christ a hand clap of praise all over the house of God. Come on now. We got to make some noise. We got to make some noise. We got to set the atmosphere. The word is on its way. We got to make some noise on this morning. We got to set the atmosphere. We got to set the atmosphere on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Create an atmosphere. The word. I believe there's a word on this morning that's about to set us free and give us the victory. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Now I want to introduce the song and present to others our very own Bishop Lionel Joseph Trailer. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Give God a great hand clap of praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the morning. Come on. Praise him all day long. Feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him in the morning, praise him all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. If you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. Let's have church. Let's have 
church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Come on, let's have church. song. Ain't nobody waiting till they die to sing that song. I'm going to sing it right now. I said, I'm going to sing it right now. I said, I'm going to sing it right now. All right? I'm going to do it again. Oh, some glad morning when this life is over. I will fly away. Come on, Shante. I'm going to a land where joy will never end.
gonna fly away. I'm gonna fly away. One of these old moments won't be very long. I'm gonna fly away. You're gonna look for me. I'm gonna fly away. I'll be going home. I'm gonna fly away. Going up to heaven. I'm gonna fly away. There I'm a singing shout. I'm gonna fly away. Ain't nobody there. I'm gonna fly away. Nobody gonna put me out. I'm gonna fly away. 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 Put on my long white robe. 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 Hey, I'ma tell the story. I made it over. I made it over. I made it over. I'm gonna fly away. I'm gonna fly away. I'm gonna fly away. We got something for the showers. We got something for the shouters. We got something for the praises. Ooh, 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 ooh. I will praise. Give me a holy shout. If I came to lift my note, keep the DJ in the nightclub, y'all quiet, and keep the church, the church. Ooh, y'all quiet now. I wouldn't want to pick them up, I want to put them down. All right, give God a hand clap of praise in this building. Mm. Come on, give it to Jesus. Give him a praise. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Before I go to the word, help me celebrate my beautiful wife, Prophetess LaShawn Trailer. Amen. Mother of Epicenter this morning, we give God glory and praise. Thank God for the music ministry, praise team ensemble. Awesome job this morning. Thank God for all the leadership of this house in their respective places, all the men of God, women of God that help mix up the conclave of leadership here. Thank God for all of you. Amen. Who, amen. Who came from far and near and didn't let anything stop you from being in the house of the Lord on this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of our live streamers who are with us by social media. Come on, thank God for them. We make no apologies for who we are. We are the epicenter. And if you're trying to figure out who we are, we just, we just them people. 
Amen. I keep telling folks to be like the young sing. We do a little bit of everything. You got a little instrument, little, yeah, we do a little bit. Praise God. Amen. We do a little bit of everything. We got uh, a little hand clapping, a little foot stumping. We do a little quartet. Y'all quiet. Little, little Baptist choir. We got a little bit of everything in here. We're Pentecostals and we just, we don't know. We just, we're not confused. We just like it all. We just like all of it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We just people. We kingdom people. We are happy people. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Been baptized in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost filled. Are you the same? We are happy people. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Amen. My, my grandmother made, I ain't going to give her age. That's all right. I can give you age. She made 76 on the 14th. Hey. And she still looked good. I mean, look real good. And she's shouting on Sunday morning. Hey. I said, I thank God that she's still here, still alive, still got the activity of her limbs, still in her right mind. Amen. If I give her the mic, she'll take you to church. I promise you she'll take you. I promise you she'll take you there. She got the preach word in her. She got the Holy Ghost. As long as I've been alive, this woman, I had the Holy Ghost. I thank God for I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for this woman. Can y'all help me celebrate Overseer Gracie Lyman? Amen. 76 years. Beautiful. The church still need church mothers, y'all. Amen. She's a real church mother. That's a bad hat. Brother Imani, you getting, her, you getting her in that hat? That's a bad hat, Reverend. Amen. I wish my live stream viewers could see that hat. Come here, Mama. Let my live stream viewers see you. Come here. Uh, huh? Yay, glory. I'm trying to hold on to her, y'all. I'm trying to hold on to her. Hey, help me. Huh? Ain't she bad? Ain't she beautiful? Huh? Happy birthday. I love you too. Huh? Oh, he trying to put some money in. See, he trying to take you from me. He trying to take you from me. I'm watching all of y'all who keep trying to take her from me. Hallelujah. There's enough of you to go around. You want to greet the people, mama? Hallelujah. I bless and praise the Lord today. I serve a mighty God. I serve an almighty God. I serve a God. Wow! That can do anything! Hallelujah! Hey! I'm just blessing him today! God has blessed me! I've been walking with him for 57 years! And I'm still telling him thank you! And the greatest name I know is Jesus! Woo! God bless you! Keep me lifted in prayer! Woo! You know, can't nobody do me like Jesus. <laughs> can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hey. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. have a church and then y'all want to push all this the the golden saints out you need the golden saints to remind you can't nobody do you like jesus can't nobody do you like the lord can. nowadays they can have a whole church service and never mention the name of jesus but you can't get one of the mothers up there without them saying the name of jesus Hallelujah. Put it in perspective. 57 years of serving the Lord. And after 57 years, she's already come to the determination. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I hope it don't take you 57 years before you figure it out. That can't nobody. My God. Can't nobody. That's another reason we like to keep it mixed up, balanced, so nobody in the church feel like they're 
where they don't have a place in the church. You got to have a little bit of something for everybody. You don't, you don't open up the restaurant and just serve what you like. You open up the restaurant and you serve what the people like. And you'll come, come on now. Huh? You got, to, you got to know what's coming in your house. Hallelujah. You got to have something for the young, something for the not so young, something for the old and something for the amen, something for the golden saints. That's what we call them, golden. Amen. Oh, I love you today. I love you. Come on, help me appreciate her one more time. Overseer Lionel. All right, let me do a little teaching because y'all didn't let me preach at all last week. I couldn't even preach last week. Holy Ghost came and took over the church. Money miracles hit the house. And I mean, there was an anointing that hit this place last Sunday. And I couldn't even preach. But you're going to let me preach today. All right? For people think I can't preach. Amen. To all of our guests and visitors, amen. This is what you call oil and order. It's not chaos. This is organized oil. Amen. Chaos is when we have no control and the Holy Ghost has no control and folk do crazy things and blame it on the Holy Ghost. That's not God. Amen. Now, we're not doing crazy things. We're doing supernatural things. It's a big difference between crazy stuff, Sister Ariel, and supernatural stuff. When crazy stuff happen, crazy harvest, you get crazy results, foolishness. But when the supernatural comes in, your harvest is supernatural. Your results are supernatural. Miracles, signs, wonders begin to happen. He's a wonder. Yeah. Let me go to the word. But we're in this season because this is love month. I almost feel like I, I probably shouldn't be preaching this. <laughs> My God, but I'm going to preach it. Amen. Because there's so much going on in the world today. Let me go ahead and put a plug in. I, 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 I was going to have service here tonight, but we're going to wish to love lives and relationships. And if everything allows us, we'll have love lives and relationship at the West location tonight. Love lives and relationship will continue at the West location tonight if all is well. And you can get there. You come on and get there. Amen. Praise God. Um, let's go to the word of the Lord. I'm going to do a little, little reading. I'm going to allow you to be. Uh, see this. Somebody say love handles. Come on, say love handles. Just tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you must get a handle on your love. Mm -hmm. Turn around, tell somebody else, say neighbor, I must get a handle on the way I love. This is lover's month and the teacher is here now and so now, amen, you done had your chocolate candy and your your roses and things, you think that uh, it's over. And I'm going to tell you now, if it was over in one day, then it never really began. Amen. It never really began, you know. It was probably just beginning or it's, just, you know, it's, it's a figment of your imagination. Yeah, just your imagination. Just my imagination running away. Y'all quiet. <laughs> yeah, you thought it was love. It was just your imagination. I want to teach from this topic. Prophetess Trailer started this series off, and she set the bar so high. I guess the Holy Ghost gave me a pass last week. Say, Trailer, you don't want to come behind her. So he just gave me a pass. <laughs> Let's go to the word. Song. Song of songs, or what you know as the Song of Solomon. Song of Songs, the fifth chapter. I'm going to use uh, two verses of scripture, then I'll do a little elaborate reading. We're going to have some good teaching right now. So you should have got your shout. You should have got your dance because I don't know if you're going to shout and dance after this. Amen. But you'll be better. I think we'll all be better. I think we'll all be better. better. Today I'm, I'm your pastor, but today I'm going to be your therapist. Dr. Trailer is in the house. Dr. Trill is in the house. Praise the Lord, the love doctor. <laughs> the love doctor is in the house this morning. And you, you, in, you in time for Sunday morning therapy with the love doctor. <laughs> Song of Solomon. Song of Songs, fifth chapter, seventh verse is where I'm going to start reading for the sake of time. If you're there, say amen. It says, the watchman. The watchman that went about the city found me. When they found me, look what look condition I was in. They found me 
they smote me, they wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, if you find him, that you tell him, look at this, that I am, that I'm sick of love or that I'm sick in love. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? One of the daughters asked, O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou does so give us this responsibility? What's going on with your relationship to the point where you're bleeding on us? Trying to charge us to hold y'all together. I want to teach from this topic on this day. We're sticking with our theme, love handles. I want to teach from this topic this morning, love overboard. Love overboard. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, I got to get a hold of my love. Tell somebody else, I have to get a hold of my love. The word is already blessed. We're already moving. You may be seated. God, give me the tongue of the learner, ability to speak in Jesus' name. Love handles. When you think of love handles, of course, the first thing that comes to your mind is those little side bars that you kind of start getting. We call it love handles because sometimes the brothers get it right after we get married. Y'all quiet now. Ain't that right, Brother Petrell? It happened to him quick, too. He got married, he got happy, then all of a sudden love handles appear. Yeah, that's what happens when you get happy. You get that woman something to hold on to. Make sure you're right. Yeah. But for the sake of our discussion, we're playing on, on those words and playing on those sentiments that here's the reality that sometimes love can get away from you. I want you to hear that again. Love can sometimes get away from you. It can get away from the best of us. Because what is love but an emotion? And emotions can run wild. Emotions are something that you have to discipline, something that you have to maintain, something that you have to control. And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, love needs discipline. Love needs maintenance. And love needs control. Tell your neighbor, get a hand on your love. And it's not just in plutonic relationships. It's not just with you and your, your significant other, not just you and your spooky, your chocolate hero. Keep sitting there. I'll find what you call him. I'll find what you call him. It's not, it's not just you and, and, you know, your boy wonder, right? But it's in every relationship that you build, whereas you open up your soul. I got to get a hand on my love. Now, the, the phrase love overboard was a title to an old Gladys Knight R&B song. Y'all know anything about Gladys Knight? I know there's a generation that have no idea who Gladys Knight is, and we forgive y'all because y'all don't know what good music is. We, we understand, you You know, you got a whole generation of y'all just was infected by Lil Wayne, so you don't know what you think. You think Lil Wayne and Chris Brown good music, so we just forgive y'all. That's a lie, that's a devil. If you think Chris Brown make love songs, you're in trouble. Oh, I ain't going to get too many amens from the millennial section, but that's all right. You can't put Chris Brown on stage with Luther Vandross. It's just not going to happen. That's two different, that's two different languages of love. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, what's Luther? All Luther got to do is... Um, 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 um. That's all Luther got to do. And it's, it's over. Still in love. Still in love. We. <laughs> when Luther do that, it's over. It's over. So you're going to be. 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 What you going to do?
do with that? You can't do nothing with that, Chris Brown. <laughs> can't do nothing with that. What you going to do? <laughs> Y'all, my generation was so confused, they thought Trapped in the Closet was a love song. How is Trapped in the Closet? Now he up in the closet. What you going to do with that? Ain't no love song. Oh, hurry up and open the closet. I got y'all attention this morning, don't I? But Gladys Knight had a song called Love Overboard. And you know what you think of when you think of overboard? You think of what happens when you're on a ship and a man falls off. When he falls off, off the ship, he falls into the waters or he falls into the deep. And he falls into the ocean or he falls into the deep. And normally, and normally there's somebody who's on the ship who notifies the captain. Man overboard. It means stop the boat. Quick. Drop the anchor. Throw, throw, throw a, a life preserver over. This person is in trouble. This person needs help. They're, they're going overboard. And Gladys said, love was overboard. Give me a little bit. I'm going to work in a little bit. I might preach my way out. And Gladys said in her song, the Pips was talking to us. Yeah, she had a group called the Pips. You know how Job had three friends. Gladys had three friends. Job, three friends, was saying, tell us about your trouble. The Pips was telling Gladys, tell us about your, your situation. And they say, they say to her, Gladys, Y'all, I'm going to work this thing in here this morning. Uh, they say, Gladys, <laughs> you know you work. <laughs> uh, Gladys, you know you love too hard. Now, I grew up hearing people say work too hard, but that's, it didn't say work too hard. It said, Gladys, you know you love too hard. Think about that. Think about that, Sister Mary. Love too hard. That almost seems like an oxymoron, a contradictory statement. How do you love too hard? We have a commission and a commandment to love. We have a commandment to even love our enemies. I thought loving your enemies is hard to love, but there's a place where you can love too hard. Gladys, you know you love too hard. But I tell them, but Gladys begins to explain to herself, but I tell them not nearly hard enough. They say, girlfriend, you know you go too far. And she, around the world, she said, ain't far enough. Gladys? Gladys. You know you go too far around the world. Ain't far enough. Because I only want to show you what you mean to me. Every time I'm reaching out to you, I start to sink. I want to show you what you mean to me. And every time I begin to show you how much I love you, I begin to sink. I may be drowning with desire from your sweet, sweet touch. I don't care what people say because I love you so much. Love overboard. My love's in need of help. Love overboard. I sure can't help myself. Love overboard. I don't know what to do. Love overboard. I'm so in love with you. Gladys, Gladys, you know you love too hard. Watch this. I'm spinning, falling. Love's calling, and I'm falling. S-O-S-O-S-O-S. -S -S -S. My love's in need of help, and I just can't help. You, you, have you ever considered that you have a condition that you can't be the one to cure? 
Have you ever considered that maybe you're out of control because you're dealing with a situation where you need help to control? Maybe because you cannot identify the problem so you can't be the one to offer the solution. Maybe you're in trouble because you're the trouble. And self-diagnosing and self-medication self often leads to self-abuse. Self-diagnosing and self-medicating often leads to self-abuse. Self-medication often leads to drug abuse, alcohol abuse. And those are forms of self-abuse. Nobody's forcing you to use drugs in an illegal manner. You're self-abusing, you're self-medicating. And oftentimes, those are signs of emotional instability. And I always say emotional instability is a sign of spiritual immaturity. When I'm not mature in the Lord or mature in the areas of my spirit or of my, uh, of my walk with God, then my soul is often suffering because of my spiritual immaturity. My emotions are often running out of control because my soul cannot control my soul. The word of God controls my soul. Receive with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord that's able to save, deliver, to stable your emotions. Are y'all with me today? It's amazing that love, love does, is not a byproduct, watch this, love is not a byproduct of, of intellectualism. Oftentimes love is just a byproduct of our emotionalism. In other words, we love how we feel not often thinking we should only love as we think. So our love is being cultivated and catapulted at the same time from a place of emotion instead of a place of sound judgment. You fell in love with your child before you knew what your child would become. So you didn't think you loved your child. It was love at first sight. It was an emotional connection. And oftentimes you give an emotional connection to a child that has not developed into what they're going to be and then they take your love everywhere they decide to go. And now, and now you're trying to balance the love with the rebellion. You're trying to balance the love with the ins and outs and the ups and downs and the topsy turvies. You know, you're trying to figure out where does motherly love start and where does motherly love stop? How much love should father, uh, how, how, what's love when daddy decides to do and is it love if daddy decides not to do? Should I be the first one to call since they don't call? Since should I, should I go, should I push my way and press my way to be in their company uh, trying to figure out if they really want me in their company? Should I empty out another, another bank account to help Junior in this situation after I emptied out my account last time to help Junior in this situation? Should I, should I do this for my nephew seeing that my sister passed and, and I'm trying to assist my nephew. I don't want to leave my nephew. When does love start? When does love stop? When is love on the ship? And when did love go overboard? When is it trouble in the marriage or when is it a marriage in trouble? When is it bad things happening in the marriage or when is a bad marriage happening? How far is too far, Gladys? Because Gladys, you know you go, Gladys, you know you go too far. And too far, and too far for a lot of us because we believe, because we're the one that's diagnosing our situation. We're the ones saying, I haven't gone too far. But everybody standing around you is saying, you don't realize it. You're off the boat and you're sinking. This is why most of us have an issue with mentorship. This is why most of us have an issue with counseling. This is why most of us have an issue with a therapist. This is why most of us won't sit down and talk to your pastor. This is why y'all quiet now. This is why, because we want to avoid someone who will honestly 
uh, come on, diagnose our situation and say, you're, you're, you're really not on the boat no more. You're off the boat. You're off your rocker. You better get a hand on your love. You're sinking. Question. How one thinks about love defines their love and determines their actions and expectations. So I have a question. When does love become toxic? We got folk who throw that around all the time. When does love become toxic? People talk about toxicity all the time. Toxic relationships, toxic friendship, toxic environments, toxic atmosphere, toxic churches. Everything is toxic nowadays. Amen. And what determines toxicity since everything is perspective? What determines toxicity? For the sake of my discussion today, I believe toxicity came in when you became assessor. I'm going to say this again. I believe toxicity came in when you became excessive. Because it's not what's going on external that makes it toxic. It's what you intake that makes it. It don't, it don't matter if it's poisonous outside as long as I don't let that poison get in me. The Bible told you love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For all that is of the world is toxic. But here it is, I got you in the world, and I'm not going to take you out the world, but that the world through you might be purged, might be clean, might be proper, might be saved. So it don't matter how toxic the atmosphere is, I don't have to let the atmosphere make me toxic. Y'all quiet. It don't matter that I'm from the projects, I don't have to let the projects make me. It don't matter what's in my bloodline. When I get born again, I get a new bloodline. I get a new identity in Christ. I don't have to let a toxic family make me toxic. You don't understand? I did that because you ain't been married to a man as long as I've been married to a man, and it made me this way. No, your, the way you took that man made you that way. It was an excessive. Somewhere you went overboard. Somewhere you loved too much. Oh, I'm talking good in here today. Somewhere, and until you can get self-responsibility and come to some self-actualization, you will never do a self-evaluation and then move in a place where you can begin to be healed. I got to get a handle on the way I love. This is, this is why your husband said, baby, come on, let him go. I love him too, he's my son, but we got to just let him go. We got to let him find his way. In other words, you're going overboard, loving Junior. This is why the wife is telling you, baby, I know that's your mama, but listen, there's only so much you can do for your mama. Your mama's not your wife. Your mama's not your daughter. Your mother's not your responsibility, baby. You're going overboard. Y'all quiet now. You're going overboard. And you're saying the wife is toxic because she's trying to correct your, your excessiveness. Now you're saying the husband is toxic because he's trying to correct your excessiveness. Now your parents are toxic because they're trying to help you control your excessive lust and desire for things that will hurt you in the long run. This is why love can become toxic because we ourselves can love overboard. What is love overboard? Love out of balance. Oh, that's good. Love out of balance. The Bible makes it plain. A false balance is an abomination. A false balance, that it never produces health, wealth, and fruitfulness. Y'all, are y'all talking to me? Excessive, excessive love will produce uh, all of these other poisonous traits. Excessive love will produce spousal abuse. Excessive love and I'm glad I heard the counselor say yes, because now I know I'm talking right. Excessive love will produce child abuse. Excessive love, excessive love. Sometimes because we love from an unhealthy place. If my love is not healthy, I cannot love you healthy. I cannot love you properly until I get a proper understanding of what love is. Often people say, I can't love you until I love myself. But if I think I'm loving myself properly and the love I'm giving myself is abusive, how can I love you properly? If I'm abusing myself, you better believe I'll abuse you. 
And when I abuse you, I'm going to rationalize that it's not abuse based on the fact that I do it. I do it. I'm good. But you're not called to love me like you love you. You're called to love me the way I want to be loved. Y'all quiet now. And, and, and so if you can't love me the way I want to be loved, and you're trying to love me the way that you are loving yourself. Now, I know what the Bible says you must first love yourself or you love your neighbor as you ought to love yourself. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. Here's the problem. If I love you the way I love me and I'm improperly loving me, then I will improperly love you. So I got to get a biblical definition, a sound God definition on how to first properly love me. If I haven't learned from God how to properly love me, I have no clue how to properly love you. Whether you be my mama, my daddy, my wife, my children, my nieces, my nephews, my uncles, my friends, or church members. Until I get a proper understanding on how to properly love me, how in the world do you expect me to properly love you? I can't properly love you. I don't know how to love me. I got to get a handle on loving me. I'm still abusing me. I'm still, in, I'm still so needy that I don't know how to love myself. I can't even stand being by myself. I can't even stand being alone with myself. I don't like what I see in the mirror. I don't like when I read my own history. I don't like my past. I don't like my present. I don't see my future. I don't like my mom and them. I don't like my brothers and sisters. I don't like the neighborhood I live in. I don't like the house I live in. I don't like the car I drive. I don't like the church I attend. Now, if I don't like nothing in my life, why do you want to be a part of my life? What makes you think I'm going to like you? I'm in trouble, and I just invited you to my trouble. I'm a troubled soul that's trying to put love on you. If I'm a troubled soul trying to put love on you, all I did was invite you to my trouble. This is why God said, I don't need to bring them in the promised land. All they do is murmur and complain. I showed them the prosperity, and they murmured and complained about the prosperity. I showed them the clusters and grapes. All they saw was the giants. People with that kind of vision cannot properly appreciate the next level. Y'all won't go with me. When your vision is so tainted that all you see is problems, you can be in your promise. And all you see is problems. You can be in your prosperity. All you see is problems. That means I can be the best thing to you since sliced bread. And all you're going to pull out of me is my problems. Watch this. God called us to love each other, love your brothers, love your sisters, even as you love yourself. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem when it comes to love. Can I, can I give you a quick revelation? The Bible said God is love. Anything born of God is born of love. Now, here's the problem. God is love and God is perfect. Then God calls us to love each other and we're not perfect. I want you to guess that again. So if I'm not perfect, Minister Felix, that means there's no way I can give perfect love. And whoever I decide to place my love on, Sister Celine, will be imperfect lovers because they're people and no one is perfect. My children would not be perfect. My spouse is not perfect. I'm not perfect. My parents are not perfect, yet I've been commissioned to love them like the perfect God loves us. That means I got to find a balance on how to do this simply because everybody I'm deciding to love is imperfect and I'm loving them from an imperfect place because I'm not perfect. Only God can give perfect love. Ooh, that was good. I felt, I felt the whole room got quiet. Only God can give perfect love. Why are you expecting perfect love from imperfect people? Why are you expecting perfect love from your children and they came from you? And what are you defining as perfect love? Because the only love that's perfect is the love of God. And if you're expecting me to love you like God, loves you, you will always have failed expectations. If you're expecting me to respond to you like God responds to you, you're going to always have failed expectations. 
Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all don't, y'all. So, so, so a lot of us are in relationships, covenant relationships, friendships that cannot stand the test of time because in time you're going to find out that somebody love is excessive. Love is overboard or somebody's love is imperfect. Let me give you this and I'm going to get out your way. This scripture came to my mind. The first scripture came to my mind because what, what got me was, was, was with the woman, the one that was in love with her husband or her, her beloved. Watch this. I don't have time to, to really address it because she also deals in, in, in the Song of Solomon, the eighth chapter, when she says in eight and six, she says, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. In other words, she said, burn me in your heart, tattoo me in your flesh. Watch this. She said, for love is strong as death. And then she said, jealousy is cruel as the grave. It's almost like she said, I'll kill you. I, I love you so much, I'll kill you. Y'all missed it. Did, I'm going to say it again. She said, you need to set me on your heart and brand my name on your arm. Come on, let's go get tattoos. I will put my name on you. I, I don't want to just be in your heart. I want everybody to know that you for me. Watch this. Set a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death. You got to be careful when people talk about I love you to death. Why you can't love me to life? Why you got to love me to death? Huh? You got to watch that joke at the altar. To death do us part. You got to say, hold on, Rev. Stop this thing right here. Stop this. Stop it right now. Say, man, I ain't even like the way you looked at me when you said that. Take your ring right now. Take your ring. I'm going to call my brother for you. What's wrong with you? To death do us part. Error! <laughs> Are you talking about natural death or you talking about killing me? I don't even know what you're talking about. Go home, get rid of all the visine. I don't want no visine in the cabinets. You know what I'm saying? So don't, you can't let you cook for me. Y'all quiet now. I'll get rid of all the radiator fluid. Hallelujah. I'll be watching like if, if they spend too much time watching another 48 hours. It's my favorite TV show. This the episode when he found out that. Did you know she got away with it for 30 years? But, they, but, but that, that's just in the movies. People get found out all the time. But love, watch this, is strong as death, and jealousy is as cruel as what? Now watch what. She said, the coals thereof are coals of fire which have the most vehement flame. The word vehement should not be used to describe love. Many waters can't quench love, neither can the floods drown it. And if a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it utterly will be of little value. Continue. Maybe it sounds poetic, but after deep consideration, I have a great, a great concern with the way you love here, young lady. Why do you have to mention death when you mention love? Why do you have to talk about jealousy and the grave in connection? And what is this vehement flame? So we go back to song, I'm, I got to get out of here, song of Solomon chapter 5. It, under, I understand now. She says, watch this, Minister Felix. She said, I went looking for my love. In the middle of the night, she got out of her bed. Y'all quiet now. He ain't home yet. She went looking for her. Where she at? Where she? She think I'm playing with her. Where's she at right now? 
uh-huh, this too late. And I called her three times, and she ain't answered my FaceTime. Oh, she think I'm playing with her. Huh? She went looking for him, and the watchmen found her. The watchmen are the city, the city officials, those who have to watch this city for danger. Now, now the gate key, now you out too late. Basically, the watchmen see you, you know, certain neighborhoods, you drive around 2, 3 in the morning, they're going to pull you over. What you, what you around here for? What you doing? Now, the Bible said they smote her. She said they smote me. They hit me. They wounded me. Who did it? The keepers, the police. The keepers of the walls, they took away my veil from me. In other words, she had to wear her covering in the middle of the night. They took it off. Now, all of this is happening because you cannot get control of your emotions. I'm almost done already. And after she was beat and wounded and stripped of her covering, the only thing she could tell the women is, but did y'all find him? Any of y'all saw him? Was he with you last night? Go back and read it. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, why would they know where he is? Y'all won't preach with me. And you not know where he is. And why are you comfortable having this conversation with them about him? Y'all won't quiet. Y'all won't go with me now. It's, 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 because, it's because your love is sick. Don't worry about that I just was assaulted. Don't worry about that I was just wounded. Don't worry about that my heart has been broken. Don't worry about that I'm no longer under my covering. Don't worry about that I'm, I'm being abused and I'm physically abused and I'm the uncovered and I, he probably with one of y'all. The only thing I want you to let him know is that I still love him. I, re I really love him and tell him I want him to know. Tell him I'm so, I'm so sick in love with him. Tell him I'm depressed. Tell him I'm oppressed. Tell him I can't live without him. If you see him, tell him. Y'all won't preach with me. Y'all quiet now. I'm glad I let y'all get past Valentine's Day because some of y'all would have canceled dinner. The Holy Ghost held this message up because you would have canceled dinner. Say, man, if you, if you find my old lady, bro, if you see my old lady, tell her, tell her I really miss her. Some of y'all was all on Facebook. I miss you. I miss you. I'm talking to you, baby. I miss you. <laughs> she on lifecation for five. I miss you. Now she at the 80s concert. She had the Master P concert. You talking about, I miss you. Y'all won't preach with me. <laughs> Tell him I'm sick of love. And I believe the reason you're sick of love is not his fault, it's your own. Because you can't get a handle on your love. I believe it's not her fault. It's not her fault that you tolerate the abuse. It's not her fault that you tolerate the neglect or the disrespect. It's your fault. Your love is sick. It's not the children's fault that they can walk all over you, mistreat you, abuse you, neglect you, talk to you any kind of way, and you still to give them everything that the Lord has given you. It's not their fault. It's your fault. Because your love is sick. They're not sick. You're sick. And you need to get a hand on your love. Look at the scripture. I got to go. James 1, 21. Write this down. I'm going to give you these quick three points and I'm out of here. I'm going to preach my way out, Betrayal. James 1 and verse 21. I don't know why this scripture came to me when the Lord gave me love overboard. As soon as the Lord gave me love overboard, this scripture came to me. James 1, 21. It said, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and, fluid to it and, and superfluity, 
of naughtiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. That scripture came to me, and I'm thinking, what does this have to do with relationships? Surely this is just talking about sin and, and loss. And no, this is talking about access. This is talking about excessiveness. So when the Lord gave it to me, the word wherefore means for this reason. And God gave me like a, this is an LJ, LJT version. I'm not transliteration, but an LJT translation. For this reason, put down, instead of saying lay apart, it says, for this reason, put down some distance between you and the offense. Are y'all listening to me? For this reason, wherefore, Lay apart, put down some distance between you and all filthiness, which, is, which means what is offensive, and superfluity, which means even those things that are unnecessary and excessive. Of naughtiness, naughtiness meaning that you're doing uh, uh, of the amount of things that are not decent or good for you. So God said, for this reason, put you some distance between you and the offensive things that are unnecessary, excessive things that you're doing, the amount to, that will amount to nothing decent or good for you. And be willing to accept with humility and implant God's word, which has the ability to keep you safe, even rescue your heart and your mind. Did y'all hear that? He said, you need to put you some distance between what keeps offending you and stop doing this unnecessary, excessive things because it's not going to amount to nothing decent or good. You're going overboard and it's not going to amount to anything. What you really need to do is put some distance between you and that offensive thing. Are you listening to me? And how am I going to do that? With the word of God, it'll keep your mind safe and it will even rescue your heart. If you got a broken heart, the word of God will rescue it. If you got a troubled mind and uh, emotional instability, the word of God will rescue it. Medicine may medicate it, the word of God will heal it. Prozac may medicate it, the word of God will heal it. Y'all quiet now. I believe the word of God can bring stability to the double-minded man. It's not just that God can mend a broken heart, but he can rescue it, even keep that heart under control. When your heart is out of control, there's three things you're going to always see. Number one, patience becomes permission. When you're out, when you are overboard or excessive and your heart is out of control, you'll have these signs. The number one thing is patience becomes permission. When long suffering simply becomes suffering too long, we call that permissible pain. You think it is patience. It's not, it's not patience anymore. It's permission to cause me pain. And if your love, no, no, and if your love continues to allow you to be in pain, the person causing the pain ain't the problem. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. The person that consistently lays there and takes the pain is the problem. Somebody say this with me. My patience will not become pain by permission. Say it again. My patience will not become pain by permission. Number two, when your love is excessive and out of control, love hurts. Now watch this. I'm not talking about the pain that you're allowing or the pain that's coming to you. But because you're hurt, guess what you begin to do? So now love hurts. Hurt people hurt people. And the first person hurt people usually hurt is themselves. Ooh. You know, there's some people that's hurting that won't hurt others, but they will consistently hurt themselves. Sometimes you see an outward show of that, of cutting themselves burning themselves. I was associated with a young man one time that was in a bowel of depression. He would smoke cigarettes and every time he got to the end of his cigarette, he would put it out on his skin. 
He wasn't bothering nobody else, but he was, in, he was, he was so toxic to himself till he would hurt himself. Hurt people often hurt people, but before they hurt, sometime before they hurt others, they consistently hurt themselves. And if I hurt myself, given the right environment at the right time, I'll hurt you. You don't know, I might be a ticking time bomb, a powder keg, just waiting for the right thing to explode. This is why we tell folk when you're in a dating process, don't just ask who do, do a hair. You need to ask her background. You need to ask the things that may uh, uh, let you see the pain surface so you can begin to see if this is something you can handle. You know, they got folk that have been married for, for a long time. And, you know, I've heard conversations all the time. We've been married all these years, and we've never had an argument. I believe that's because you never had a deep enough discussion to disagree. Because if we get in a deep enough discussion, we're not going to agree on everything. And if she sits there or if he sits there and he always agrees with you on everything or she agrees with you on everything, let's let you know she's hiding something. Let's let you know he's hiding something. Y'all quiet. And I'd rather agree with you than divulge or discuss what's really at the core of me. And that's a very dangerous place to love. Because the real you ain't even showed up yet. The real you, I don't even know. You're hiding him from me. You're hiding her from me. Love hurts. Hurt people hurt people, and they usually hurt themselves. A lot of us are hurting ourselves because our love is excessive. We put all of this love responsibility on somebody else to love us in a way we don't even love ourselves. And, and you're upset that they can't give you the love you need. And the reality is the real you haven't showed up to get the love you need. That was good. I can't really love you till the real you show up. And you were afraid to show me the real you because the real you too damaged for you to even deal with. So until the real you shows up, I'm... I'm I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a conundrum loving the loving the one that you keep showing up and I'm loving that one ineffectively because that's not really you. Did that just make sense? And that, that makes up about, about a good 50% uh, uh, of all these new relationships because you fell in love with my selfie and I didn't even love myself. You fell in love with the image that I put on social media and you never met the real me. The real me gonna show up seven years into this marriage uh, standing over you with a knife in my hand uh, and you gonna say, who is this? Where's my wife? Come on, where's my husband? The real me gonna show up. Pastor, you make it, you make it, you make it, I make it just like Jesus made it. Jesus told him, <laughs> They say, man, how can you be saved? After Jesus started discussing relationships, Peter said, who can be saved? Then he asked that question, because it's serious. Most of us don't know how serious it is. And I, I heard a single person say this. They said, married folk always make it so hard for single people to get married. Because married people have discovered something that you don't know yet. It's hard on a player. Y'all quiet. And you just don't know it yet. Huh? Y'all trying to keep us from getting married. No, I'm not trying to keep you from getting married. I'm trying to make sure you have an understanding of what you're about to sign up for. I'm trying to make sure that you know who it is you're marrying. I'm trying to make sure that you healed and your love right because you're going to mess somebody else up. Huh? I had a young man that was getting married uh, to a... I, I, I ain't going to say who to get married to. And he was sitting down talking to me. And he was such a good young man. He started talking to me. And he said, what you think? I said, you sure you want to marry her? And the truth is, I knew her more than I, I had just met him. I had been connected to the her her whole life. When the him showed up, I'm like, Run. Run, 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 Forrest. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know 
what you signing up for? She's only showing you, y'all quiet now, what she wants you to see. And the truth is, we all do that. Can we, can we say amen? I'm not showing you all the skeletons in my closet. Right? You come to the house, and you open up a closet, and don't bone fall out. What's that? That's for my neighbor. Let me put that back up. Uh, bones, bones, bones. Not ready to address who you really are. Then you get into a relationship, and the relationship is forcing you to deal with the you. They're trying to figure out why you love like this. Gladys, why you, why you like this? And the truth is, Gladys is loving from an insecure, very damaged place. If you were loved to the point that it's causing you to sink over and over again, something's wrong. If that love is causing you to spin out of control over and over again, something is wrong. Your love is overboard. Play something soft. I'm, I got to close. Number three. Three signs that your love is excessive. One, patience becomes permission. Two, love hurts. And number three, you get lost in love. You get lost in love. In other words, your love has no vision and has no limits. Your love has no boundaries. I'm just lost. I'm spinning. I'm, I'm falling. It's deep. There's no bottom. There's no top. There's no... And you want to have that kind of love and feel safe. But can I tell you the truth? You can only have that kind of love with God. Everybody else, you better have a boundary. Every other relationship, you better have a vision. You don't get married just because you lost in love. Huh? I, I get, I get, I, I'm, I'm, I, that's that. And all them little songs come back to my mind. You know, I grew up in the 80s. I was born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s. And I hear a new edition right now in my mind. I hear a new edition right now. All of in love, I can't live without you. All of, all my dreams are about, I'm love in love. Yes, it's true. I can't live without you. Oh, no. That's dangerous. That's the, it, them love songs, they pretty, but they make absolutely, positively, no sense. I don't want to be lost in love. I want to be found, y'all quiet. Isn't it amazing when God found you? You were lost, but now you are. Then you want to get in a relationship and get lost. <laughs> See what I mean? You want to get in a relationship and get lost again? Uh-uh. We need a vision. We need a plan. We need... Come on, we need bound. We need to know, uh-uh, this ain't happening. We're not tolerating this in this relationship. No, your children need boundaries. Your children need parents. No, no 12-year-old should come in the house and tell their mama, their daddy, what their gender going to be. Let me tell you something, boy. I love you enough to tell you you's a boy. When God gave you to me, you was a boy. Now, until you're old enough, boy, to be other than a boy in my house, you's a boy. Y'all quiet now. Your mama named you Clay. I'm going to call you Clay. And see, y'all get scared to say stuff like that. Be careful, Bishop. I ain't being careful nothing. If, uh, if, we, if you were born Zion, you're supposed to die Zion. Y'all won't preach with me. And I love you enough to tell you. should correct love says this is a boundary we don't go over this boundary but now we get lost in love do we scared to, to even say stuff well you know I love him so 
No, you love too hard. You love too far. That's not good. This is an 11-year-old, 10-year-old, 8-year-old. How an 8-year-old child going to tell you about their sexuality? Why is an 8-year-old child having a discussion about sexuality? Why? When I was growing up, we couldn't even say sex at 8. Sex was a, dirt, was a curse word at 8 years old. Couldn't say sex. That's why when you was growing up, you said everything else. You said, we're going to play house. We're going to play. We, you can say everything, but you weren't going to say we doing sex because you were scared that somebody even thought that you said sex. You play hump the head. You play house. You play catch kids, get a little bit, but you did not say sex. Because you weren't going to have sex, you get a little bit. Y'all don't want to preach with me in this sanctified church. Huh? They told us kissing to get her pregnant. Oh, you kissed her? Oh, you gonna have a baby? I don't want no baby. I don't want no baby. Come on, take it back. Take it back. Take the kiss back. Get the kiss off. It's a kiss of a baby. No, oh, eight, nine years old, man. We was at Sunday school. We was at vacation Bible school. You wanted to go swimming and ride your bicycle. At eight years old, we wasn't talking about sex. We were talking about mangoes, bicycles, and putting the can in the back of your tire and make it make the noise. We were playing Super Mario Brothers and Pac-Man and who can beat the Miss Pac-Man score and Atari. What are we teaching? You want to be a parent? Be a parent. Twelve years old? Twelve years old? You going to dress your 12 years old for a predator? Then when the predators show up, you mad at the predator. But it was your love that created the environment. Ricky Smiley can't say it because he got a brand. I can say it, holiness is my brand. You don't dress a 12 years old up provocative, whether you're a girl, or whether she a girl, a guy, confused. 12 years old, ain't getting no nails done at 12 years old. You had, you had balls and ribbons in your hair at 12 years old. Say amen. Three plaits, one here, one here, and one there. Three plaits. Balls and ribbons in your hair because you're but a little girl. 12 years old, we got the same haircut when we got in the chair. Everybody got an ivory lee or just a little fade in the line. We come in here with all this stuff. You'd be lucky if they let you get one little part in your head. You're a little boy. Can I get a hair? You can't get nothing. I'm paying for this haircut. Cut it all off. Everybody had the same fade, same haircut, same part. Come to church. And you knew you was a little boy. You knew you was a little girl. And you knew where your butt was going to sit down in church. And you knew you wasn't going to cut up because they were going to get you. Everybody going to get you. If mama miss you, one of them aunties got you. One of them older cousins got you. Your uncle will get you. Somebody going to get you. Somebody going to tell your little butt to straighten up. You're a little boy. You're a little girl. This love is excessive. It's toxic. You done took it in. And now you're putting it. You done took all that poison in. And now you're putting it on your children in the name of love. You took all that poison in. Now you're in a relationship talking about, talking about. And that's my, that's my next message. I wanted to deal with it because I want to get a love. I'm, my next message is called, It's Complicated. It's complicated. They're talking about what's your relationship status. It's complicated. Oh, I'm going to deal with that. Because now marriages have moved to it's complicated, open relationship. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. You're, you're a married woman and accepted that your married, your husband also has a bisexual love. And you accept it. I said, you accept it, I ain't taking it back. 
in the name of love. In the name of love. What you mean open relationship? Ain't, ain't nothing open in my house. Everything closed. Everything closed at my house. If, if it's open, you better not let me catch you. Because I'm going to open up some other stuff. Your head to the fat meat. White meat right there. I'm going to open his head wide up for him. Then I'm going to pray for him. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Lord, he ought to know it, not to cometh in my house it. Because if he cometh in my house it, the full five shall ring it. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk real, brother Doug. They don't want to talk real. Huh? Ain't nobody come in here praying? I was praying before I got here. Lord, don't let me kill him. Lord, don't let me kill him. Your love to excessive. You got to get a balance. I'm, I'm being facetious because I know it's a hard topic. Scripture said, love working no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. But remember this. The law is perfect. Love is perfect because God is perfect, but we're not. So we have to work on loving in balance. We have to work on loving. So we are expecting perfect love from imperfect people, but because all men are imperfect, we must love unfeigned but with understanding. How do I do that, Bishop? I must establish first a healthy soul. <clears throat> I have to get healthy. I have to get healthy, y'all. So that I can maturely establish healthy love relationships with imperfect people. Did you catch that? I have to get myself healthy enough to realize that everybody I deal with and love is imperfect. And if I can't deal with the imperfection of people, I do not need to love them. Or in other words, I do not need to engage personal relationships until, until I can healthily deal with with these imperfect people. Realizing that I myself am imperfect. I'm an imperfect soul. And guess what else? And I need somebody to love me. I need people to love me in my imperfection, through my imperfections. I need that. Our lust and our desire to bring uh, is being birthed when our lust and our desire is being birthed, it may bring debt to every relationship we have. So you must get control of your mind, of your heart. If, if I don't get control, come get this, son. If I don't get control, if we don't get control, I'm done, I'm done. If we do not get control of our own souls, our own desire. Listen, everybody not lying to you about you. Especially people that love you enough to get close enough to you to tell you. It's an area you really, you need help in. You need help in this area. I don't need no help. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what the problem is. You can't tell. I'm... And when, that, when you tell me what the problem is, you're going to identify something wrong in me instead of acknowledging the issue that's in you. Okay, so there's something wrong with me. Does that stop? Or change the fact that there's an issue in you? And if I don't deal with me, I may not be healthy enough to deal with you. Because you're going to come with issues too. And if I'm not healthy enough for me, I'm going to abuse you over things that you actually need healing over yourself. Did that make sense? If you got, I'm, I'm just using this for example. Young man coming out the lifestyle, going to be saved. The last thing he need to do is go to a man who's not healed coming out the lifestyle. And he's going to misuse and misabuse 
an area in your life you're not healed simply because it's an area in his life he's not healed. And then you start thinking that maybe the problem was you, but the problem is only you if you consistently stay enslaved in that relationship knowing that you did not initially initiate the relationship for that. Now it's no longer him. It's you. Because it's obvious that there's something in you that wasn't done yet. And he just tapped into it. And your excessive need to be loved is going overboard into perversion. Yeah, we all need to be loved. But if your love goes overboard, it's not going to leave you filled. It's going to leave you sinking. It's going to leave you sinking. Stand to your feet. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got to get a handle on my love. It ain't just for singles. I hope I came enough to realize, to make you realize that's for marriages, that's for parenting. That's in every relationship you've already established and ones you're going to establish. You're a parent, you have to love them children healthy, balanced. If you're, a ch if you're a, 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 like myself, I'm an elder son, I'm going to take care of my mother, my grandmother. I got to love them healthily in a healthy balance with my own wife and children. They got to be a healthy balance. My grandmother and my mother does not come before my wife. There's a balance. But my wife shouldn't put me in competition or warfare. Oh, y'all missing it. In taking care of my grandmother or my mother. Which, I don't have that situation. I wouldn't even allow it. You understand? If you're a husband and you're trying to be the head of your home, if you're trying to do that through control, manipulation, abuse, or deception, that is not love. That is excessive. The truth be told, husband, if you have to make her follow you, she wasn't in submission anyway. You just in abuse. You can't say you're abusing her because she made you do it. Your love overboard. Wife, it's the same thing. You can't manipulate a situation with your children or your husband. You have to do it the way God told you to do it. Where he made me do it. No, he didn't. You chose to do it. You got to get a handle on your love. Children, respect and honor and loving your parents is a commandment of the Lord. When you don't respect them, love them, or honor them, you can't say, well, you don't know my mama, you don't know my daddy. I don't. God did, yet he put it in stone. Love, honor, respect. You got to get yourself healed so you don't use love as a reason to hate or be abusive. Am I teaching good? Am I done? I'm done. Lift your hand. I never get to preach my way out when I say I'm going to preach my way out. You come playing all soft. Father, I thank you. I thank you because we're getting a handle on our emotions today. We're getting a handle on our emotions. Love should never drive me out of the will of God. Love should not drive me to a place where I'm being abused and misused and misappropriated and misappreciated. Love should not make me abuse. Love should not cause me to hurt my brothers and my sisters and my family members. And I cannot cause pain in the name of love. Teach me not to allow pain in the name of love. Not to permit it. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me, God. Give me wisdom on when to connect and when to let go. Wisdom when to draw closer and wisdom when to refrain. 
Wisdom when to invest and wisdom when to withhold. Wisdom when to open my door and say, come home. And wisdom to close my door and say, you got to find somewhere else to go, baby. You can't come back here with that. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom beyond my years. Lord, help me love myself enough that if nobody else loved me, me and you is enough. Your love is enough. Your word is enough. Your mind is enough. God, I want to love the way you want me to love, but I can't love the way you want me to love until I understand the way you love me. Give fathers the ability to properly love their children. Mothers the ability to properly love their seed, their children. Oh God, help us God. There's a generation where you said the love of many would wax cold. We don't love right, God. Help us to love again. Help us to love our brothers and sisters, not walk past each other in church, but help us to embrace each other. And your pain becomes my pain and your hurt becomes my hurt. And I can't walk and sit on the pew next to you and not turn around and tell you I love you, brother. I'm praying for you, mother. I love you, sister. Help us to love again properly, properly, properly. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God one more hand clap of praise. Listen, there were a number of you who came in late. You didn't get a chance to give. I want to give you a chance to give.